friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel, Sunset Bow Tarot. So I wanted to do my regular monthly wrap up favorites and look back over the month of April. I will admit that I'm actually filming this on April 29th, but I am assuming nothing is gonna happen to change my April drastically in one day. So uh, I figured I would go ahead. Since I blew my hair dry today, instead of wearing my normal quarantine ponytail, I decided that I would actually go ahead and film this video today. So these are my favorites for the month of April. So starting with Dex, um, kind of the hilarious admission that I have to make about what's been going on in my deck collection over the month of April is that I did do some pretty drastic decluttering and I sold quite a few decks and now I seem to be just buying new decks willy-nilly to fill up the space that I freed up by decluttering. So <laughs> good job, self. I have gotten some new decks over the past month that I am really, really excited about. And so uh, some favorites from April. Um, one of the first ones is the Solara Occulto Tarot. I did do a full walkthrough of this, so I'll put that up in the description or in the um, cards, uh, a link to that video. But um, I've been really loving this deck. It's so quirky. I love the color palette of it. I love the little creatures. Like, look at this little sort of like bear centaur guy who is the Page of Pentacles. It's just got such an interesting personality. It's got such an interesting um, use of color. And I just love all of these quirky little creatures um, in this deck. It has a real magical feel to it. It kind of reminds me in a way of um, some of Peony Coin Archer's decks like the Efflorescent Tarot and the Little Monsters Tarot. Um, and I love the representations of a lot of the cards. I really got, got like lactating centaurus as uh, <laughs> the star. Um, it's, it's really readable because it's very Rider Waite Smith, but it's still has this kind of quirky feel and quirky personality to it. So I've been really loving the Solara Culto. I've been working with that one a lot so far uh, this month since I got it. I think I got it like toward the end of March. So I really have been working with it a lot in April. Another deck that I did get in April, although I didn't work with it as much and I do get the sense that I will be working with this deck more when it gets around the fall kind of period, but that is the Shadowland Tarot. And, um, those are the backs. I, I have to say I'm not a huge, huge fan of the backs. It does have gold gilding, which is pretty, but I don't know that this deck necessarily needed it. I would have loved black edging on this deck. Um, but I really like this deck a lot. As you can see, it's got that kind of cute, creepy um, feel to it, which is why I feel like this deck is really going to start to resonate a lot more around the fall and more, you know, Halloween time. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a really cool deck. It's uh, designed to really be focused on the sort of shadow side of the cards, the shadow meaning side of the cards. Um, you know, really a deck that's supposed to be uh, a, very good for shadow work. Um, and I really love the imagery of it. The guidebook is a gem. I really love the way that the creator and artist has represented um, the shadow size of the cards on in the artwork. Um, I really feel like this artwork has a lot to work with and it's really, really cool. Um, but again, I do feel like this is probably going to become a lot bigger of a deck for me around the fall. Um, not so much in the spring, but I do really love it and I have really enjoyed reading through the guidebook. I'm not done with the guidebook book yet, but I think it's really excellent. So that is, again, the Shadowland Tarot. Finally, a deck that I've been really loving sort of in the last couple of weeks, kind of the back half of April as it started to feel more spring-like where I live. Um, that is the Herb Crafters Tarot. And I am in love with this deck. Um, this is a deck where uh, I think I mentioned before, I actually decided to let go of the botanical deck because I discovered this deck and this became Oops, here are the backs. This became the botanical deck that I really wanted to work with because I just, I love the artwork. I love the concept of it. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I have actually gotten a request to do a full walkthrough of this deck, which I think is, it really justifies because the system of this is incredibly well put together. Um, and I've loved the guidebook. I've been just like pouring over the guidebook. I love the way that they have um, used plants and specifically human relationships with plants to approach the concepts in tarot and um, the way that they have 
divided up the suits, the way that they've approached individual numbers within the suits, the way that they've approached the court cards, everything about it, I just think is so well done and I'm kind of obsessed. So um, again, this is the Herb Crafters Tarot. Like I said, I do plan to do a, a fuller walkthrough of this because I did get a request for that, but I, I love this deck so much. Um, it has just felt so beautiful to work with and especially at this time of year. Um, I... I'm really, really loving this one. So I'm probably going to end up talking about this again in my next favorites because my guess is I'm going to end up working with this a lot over the next month in Mar in May as well. But um, this this deck is wonderful. So um, anyway, that's the Herb Crafters Tarot. So in terms of books, I enjoyed during the month of April. Um, I really did a lot better with my rating in April um, compared to March. April has been another interesting month. Obviously, the world is still completely upside down and topsy-turvy, but I felt more like I've started to adjust to new circumstances and started to let go of some of the stress. So I've been better able to do things like focus on reading um, and, uh, you know, do some more of those types of activities that um, I often struggle with when I'm in a state of anxiety. But so I did read several books uh, in the month of April. My two favorites that I want to talk about one of them is called The Hand on the Wall, and that is the third book in a trilogy by Maureen Johnson, who is one of my absolute favorite young adult authors. I recommend all her stuff. It's great. She is great. Um, and she wrote this trilogy called The Truly Devious Trilogy, which is basically about a girl who is a big true crime aficionado, and she goes to this sort of remote academy, like high school academy that's out in the middle of nowhere in Vermont. Um, and the reason that she wants to go to this school is because the school was founded by this very rich guy back in the 30s. And there was this huge sort of unsolved case of the century kind of thing around the kidnapping of this man's wife and daughter. And um, and so this the, the girl, Stevie is the name of the girl who's the main character in the books, really wants to solve this mystery. But then also in the present day, while she is at the school, uh, some deaths start happening at the school as well. So there's multiple different mysteries to solve. And this was the third book in the trilogy. And I found it a, an incredibly satisfying ending to all the mysteries. I thought that it was pretty ingenious the way that all of the mysteries were resolved. And it was just really, really good. So um, the Truly Devious trilogy by Maureen Johnson has been great fun. And that was the third book. So that trilogy is now complete. The other one of the books that I read in April that I really, really enjoyed was called 10,000 Doors of January by Alex Harrow. And this is a standalone fantasy novel. It's not part of a series, which is kind of nice sometimes to be able to get the full story in just reading one book, which is another thing that I enjoyed about The Priory of the Orange Tree, which I read uh, back in March. Again, standalone fantasy novel, which you it feels like you don't see those as much nowadays. Um, but 10,000 Doors of January was really, really interesting and enjoyable. Um, it is about a girl whose name is January. Um, it takes place in the early 1900s and it's about doors between worlds and her discovering information about her family, her background, her upbringing, um, and it's a really wonderful book. And I don't want to give more away than that um, if you haven't read it. Uh, it's just, it, it, I really, really loved and enjoyed it. And um, so I, that is another book that I do recommend that I did read in the month of April. As far as movies go, I really only watched two movies in April. Um, the first was I did rent on Amazon the new Emma, which was supposed to be released in theaters, but got released right around the time that all the quarantining started. So um, they ended up releasing it instead on Amazon. Um, I did really enjoy it. I, it's not my favorite ever um, film rendition of Emma. Um, I really like the miniseries that was done a couple years back that had Romola Gary and Johnny Lee Miller. And of course, there's always Clueless, which is probably the best and my favorite um, film depiction of the story of Emma that's ever been done in movies. Um, but uh, the new one was quite entertaining. There were some things about it that I wasn't as big of a fan of, but I definitely enjoyed it. So that was one movie that I watched. I also made a plan with a friend one weekend when we were feeling like 
the world was garbage and we needed a good laugh. Uh, we rented the new Cats movie <laughs> and watched it together on Gchat. And um, I have nothing good to say. <laughs> that movie was shockingly terrible. It was boring, but it was fun to make fun of. So if you love that movie, I'm really sorry, but I hated it. It was so bad. Anyway, so Cats is another movie that I watched, but again, not for purposes of, of enjoyment, just for purposes of like hanging out with a friend on chat and, you know, talking shit about it. So does it count? Probably not. As far as TV goes, I am still rewatching The Simpsons any chance I can get just because that show makes me so happy. Um, I also watched a couple of documentary series that I've been, that I really, really enjoyed. Um, I watched a kind of an older documentary series on Netflix called The Keepers, which is a true crime documentary. It came out a couple years back, like maybe 2017 or 2016, something like that. But if you like true crime documentary and you haven't watched The Keepers, it is riveting. It was so good. I could not stop watching it once I started. Um, and again, you have to like true crime because it's a pretty difficult triggering story. Um, you know, it, it involves uh, the murder of a nun who potentially was murdered because she was aware of terrible abuse that was happening at a Catholic school. Um, so, you know, again, if those are topics that are triggering to you, obviously this is a very, very difficult series um, on those topics, but it is so, so interesting and also really inspiring because kind of the main modern day characters in this documentary are these women, older women who are former students of this nun for whom, you know, she was their favorite teacher and who have basically never abandoned the quest to figure out who killed her and what happened to her. And they are such incredible badasses. They're just these totally normal women who are like in their late 50s, early 60s, who are just tenaciously pursuing solving this mystery and they're so so awesome so that aspect of it is just tremendously powerful and inspiring so I I really was completely riveted by that uh, documentary so again if it's the kind of subject matter that you would be interested in watching um, it was a really 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 good documentary series it's like eight episodes seven episodes eight episodes something like that the other documentary series that I've been watching and really really enjoying is The Last Dance on ESPN. And you might be a bit surprised <laughs> that I have been enjoying this series so much because I'm not actually a sports fan in any way, shape or form. I, and I definitely don't follow the NBA nowadays, but the documentary is about the Chicago Bulls and their kind of run of dominance back in the 90s. And back in the 90s, I paid attention to basketball, like everybody paid attention to basketball back in the 90s. And I have these really strong memories of when I was in high school and when I was in college of, you know, watching the NBA and being interested and, you know, particularly like the Bulls were such a huge deal at that time. The dream team at the Olympics was such a huge deal at that time. Like, you know, so it's really fun and nostalgic to watch this documentary because it reminds me so much of like my high school and college years watching the NBA. So I've actually really been enjoying that one, despite the fact that I like pay zero attention to sports nowadays. Um, it's been really fun to kind of like watch some nineties basketball. The other thing that I've been watching is some bad reality television, which is something that I love very deeply. Jen from Jen's Balanced Tarot knows what I'm talking about because we've been bonding about our love of bad reality TV, but I have been watching um, The Bachelor, Listen to Your Heart, because I watch every part of The Bachelor franchise. This is just who I am as a person. Um, and I've also been watching Love is Blind on Netflix. Um, one of my favorite things about bad reality TV is that you don't have to pay very close attention to it. <laughs> so um, it's very easy to do other things while you're watching it. So I've also been doing a ton of of crocheting while I've been watching uh, Love is Blind and Lis The Bachelor Listen to Your Heart. Um, I finished this blanket for my mom, which I've been working on for ages. Um, so I'll, I'll put a picture of, of that. Um, and then I've also been working now on this sweater that I'm making for my sister. So I'll put a picture of my progress on that and also maybe a picture of from the pattern of what it's supposed to look like when it's done because it doesn't look like much now but I think when it's done it'll be really cool um so anyway I'll put some pictures of that another thing that I worked on and spent a lot of time on over the month of April was finishing this super super cool 
Game of Thrones puzzle that my parents gave me, which is like a 3D puzzle where it had like a, like a I don't even know, thousand piece map layer. And then it had maybe a 400 piece topographical layer. And then it had a bunch of little buildings <laughs> that you can insert into the topographical layer to represent all of the different castles and everything. And it turned out so cool. So I'm going to be inserting some images of that because I really, really enjoyed putting that puzzle together. And I was so heartbroken to take it apart. Normally I don't take puzzles apart. I back them with sticky paper and then keep them for just because I can't stand to take them apart. It's not like I have anywhere to put them. I just have a stack of puzzles under my bed that I've put together and backed with sticky paper and then they're just like accumulating in a pile, but whatever. Eventually I'll run out of space, but whatever. Um, but this puzzle, because it's 3D, I couldn't keep it together in one piece. There was like no place that I could store it. So I had to take it apart and oh, that was so sad. But I took a million pictures of it. So I guess it will live on in my memory that way. Other things that I've been doing uh, in the month of April, I did try to make a sourdough starter. Um, it's it ha It's only been going sort of okay. But in the meantime, I have been baking some just regular non-sourdough bread. So bread baking is just very relaxing. I love kneading bread. I love the feeling of doing that. So um, it's been quite enjoyable to be baking some bread. Another absolutely wonderful and amazing thing that I've loved so much over the course of the last couple weeks is the new Fiona Apple album, which is called Fetch the Bolt Cutters. It's just a beautiful album. I've loved it so much. It's weird and quirky and so wonderful. And there's this line in one of the songs, there's a song called Heavy Balloon, which is about depression. And there's this line in it that's, I spread like strawberries, I climb like peas and beans. And it's just like in the spring, when you're feeling like you're trying to emerge from a very difficult time where you've been experiencing a lot of depression and anxiety, it's just, it's, that line has meant so much to me. So, um, I just love it. So finally, I want to get back to doing some shout outs. I haven't done YouTube shout outs in my monthly wrap ups in a while. So a couple of people that I do want to shout out in this video. Um, one of them is Laura from Aquamar uh, Aquamarine 18. Um, I've been watching her channel a lot recently. She's one of those people. And I don't know if this happens to you guys where you just discover a person whose energy just really feels good to you, you know, and so there, I've been subscribed to her for a long time, but um, there have been some videos of hers that I've missed that I've been going back to watch. And she's probably like, geez, creeper, stop commenting on my old videos. But um, I've been kind of going back and watching a lot of her videos because I've just been really enjoying her energy and um, really enjoying the way that she speaks about things. And so I've really been liking her channel a lot recently. Um, I also want to shout out to uh, Corvin Green. Um, they are another channel that I really enjoy. And um, they had taken kind of a break from YouTube for a little while, but recently came back with a new video on the Spacious Tarot, which is one of my favorite decks of this year so far. Um, and I'm just really happy to see them back and looking forward to new videos and new content. So Corvin Green is another great channel to check out. Finally, I wanna give a shout out to um, a series that has been started on Lisa from Supportive Tarot's channel. She just recently started an Eclectic Witchcraft 101 series, which has really felt like something that I kind of really needed right now. And um, I, I have a very sort of long and interesting history with witchcraft, as I'm sure you probably all know. I typically say that I don't consider myself an active practitioner of witchcraft at this time, but it's something that I have studied and been interested in for a very long time. And part of the issues that I've always had have had to do with feeling some difficulty in terms of kind of taking control of what my own practice would look like. And also feeling like some of the existing paths out there felt like a little too constraining and like I didn't fit in very well with them. So this series about eclectic witchcraft, like I said, really kind of feels like exactly what I was looking for um, in terms of embarking on a new period of exploration in that area. So I've really been enjoying it. I do want to make a video, like I said, talking a little bit about um, what my past history in that area has looked like. Um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully that'll be forthcoming over the next couple weeks. Um, but anyway, really been enjoying that series so far as well.
So just one more thing I want to mention in my shout outs because it sort of goes with uh, the topic of the Eclectic Witchcraft 101 series, but it didn't get started until right now in May. This is a couple days later that I'm doing this part of the video and I'm off camera by the way because I really need a shower. <laughs> but anyway, um, something that I am so excited about and looking forward to in addition to the Eclectic Witchcraft 101 series is Heather Carter. Uh, who is wonderful, who I love, has started a tag called 31 Days of Witchcraft that has daily prompts about witchcraft. So in addition to Lisa's series, I've also got, you know, Heather's wonderful series and then so many other people responding to all of these different prompts, talking about their craft. And again, like this all just feels like such a period of synchronicity for me. The Hierophant's been stalking me and it's... Like, I feel like in this period of exploration, there's all of these different people who I can learn from um, talking about their own craft and their own experiences. And so I'm just really excited about it. I feel, I feel really good and really eager to learn and soak up information. And so I'm so excited about that as well. So anyway, what, just one more shout out that I wanted to add. So those are my favorites and shout outs and things I have enjoyed or not enjoyed or that have made a big impression on me during the month of April. Um, I would love to hear how April went for all of you guys. So if you have done a monthly wrap up video, let me know or tell me down in the comments how your month was. Um, and I'd love to hear from you all. So anyway, hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Bye bye.